Welcome to Sports Now. I'm Kirsten Peters. And I'm Ariel Reed. Field hockey concluded their season on Wednesday, October 30th, in a 1 0 loss to Misericordia. Wilkes' 3 and 4 conference record was not enough to advance the Colonels to playoffs. However, there were some notable players from the season. Sophomore Morgan Murphy recorded the team high of 12 goals, junior Lauren Baldwin followed in second with 8, and junior Zoe Stepanski took the top spot for assists with 5. Before we take a look at all of the Wilkes Athletic Games this week, Caleb Hansen has an interview with Baldwin, who had several standout performances this season. Thanks, Kirsten. Today, we're here with junior field hockey player Lauren Baldwin. Thanks for joining us today, Lauren. Thank you for having me. You just won the Beacons Female Athlete of the Week after scoring three goals and adding an assist over the course of three games. Your two goals against Bryn Athen propelled Wilkes to a 7-0 victory, and you scored the game winner in the 54th minute to beat Eastern. How does it feel to have your hard work be recognized? Um, I'm going to be honest. I couldn't do it without my team. Their positivity um, and encouragement really, really makes me feel fantastic and uh, makes me want to win those games uh, even more. Following the Athlete of the Week honor, you have been a consistent force to be reckoned with on offense, adding a goal in both of the recent losses to DeSales and FDU. What's the approach leading up to going in for a goal? Um, I think my positioning as a big, um, is a big factor. I play on the right side, which is our strong side, so um, I try to tend to use my speed a lot um, leading up to that uh, goal, and that whole mindset really changes going into it. Um, the vibe of the team, you really feel the goal going in before it happens. Uh, it's really something that you can't really describe in, in words. The team is currently 8-6 and six overall and 1-2 and two in conference play. What's the strategy for the rest of the conference play? Um, I don't think that we should take anyone lightly. I think that uh, it's anyone ga anyone's game at this point. Um, so going into each game thinking that they're the best in the conference is, is really going to lead us a, a long way. When a game goes into overtime, how does the strategy change? Who do you think is the stiffest competition remaining in your schedule? Um, to be honest, I, like I said the previously, I don't think that there is one team that um, we could take lightly. So um, going into overtime, we've gotten caught in those situations a few times. And we know because we've been short on numbers this whole year. So we know how to approach the overtime and the 77 because that's really uh, all that we're able to practice in um, our practice day today routine. How does the field hockey team bond and prepare in general? How is this going to help the team go into the later end of conference play? Uh, honestly, we try to do things outside of the field, so uh, we, we go for dinner, we go to the movies, uh, we try to do things other than um, with a sick and ball in front of us, so uh, I think that really helps our, our team chemistry. Lauren, thanks so much for being here today. We wish you, the rest of the field hockey team, the best of luck for the rest of the season. Now back to Hurston and Eric for more. Thank you. Thanks, Caleb. In other news, most of the fall sports teams have wrapped up their regular seasons and are looking ahead to post-tournament play. With fall sports concluding, winter sports have kicked off their seasons as well, making this a sports-filled week on campus. Despite most of the fall sports wrapping up, Colonel football is in the thick of conference play. Wilkes posted a 45-20 victory over FDU Florham on Saturday. With all five Colonel quarterbacks making an appearance, a safety, multiple kick returns by defensive lineman Justin Trollinger, and a Superman-like hurdle from wide receiver Derek Nelson, Saturday's game was won for the books. With senior quarterback Jose Tabor suspended for the first half of the game, head coach Jonathan Drock had to rely on his arsenal of five quarter Colonel quarterbacks. With second-string quarterback Heath Hubler in the game, he found the answer with freshman Abubakar Fofana, receiving 39 and 38-yard passes in the end zone. According to Drock, quote, we played a lot of different guys today, which was different, a bit different for us, but they all stepped up and did pretty well. It was nice to have Heath back and get some of those extra other guys a little bit of extra time in the first half, end quote. Upon Tabora's return after halftime, he capped off an 11-play, 87-yard drive to Nelson for, tw for a 20-yard touchdown pass. With the duo in their groove, Tabora and Nelson scored back-to-back -to -back touchdowns. From 11 yards out, Nelson flew through the air over an FDU defensive back in cinematic action that sent the game out of reach for the Devils. Wilkes will face Stevenson University on November 9th for Senior Day. On the turf, men's and women's soccer finished their regular season play with a combined four wins. Women's soccer posted back-to-back 1-0 -back shutouts against Oneonta and Delaware Valley. 
against Oneonta, sophomore forward Tatiana Mancera notched her second career goal late in the first half. Her goal proved to be the difference maker as the rookie stole a loose ball in the box and deposited it into the back of the net. In the second of their two games, Wilkes clinched a playoff spot with senior midfielder Emily Wirth, breaking the scoreless tie between Wilkes and Delaware Valley in the second half. Off of an assist from senior forward Haley Evans, Worth found the back of the net to punch the Colonels' ticket to playoffs. Wilkes will travel to top seed Stevens in the semifinals of the MAC Freedom Tournament on Tuesday, November 5th at 7 p.m. Like the women, the men posted two shutouts. This time, the Colonels had a 2-0 non-conference win over Penn College and a 6-0 victory over Delaware Valley that has them awaiting a postseason tournament bid. For Wilkes, there were seven different scores between the two contests, with junior midfielder Seth Fowler being the only player to rec record two goals in the contest against Delaware Valley. The team awaits word on a possible ECAC tournament berth. On the turf and off the turf and onto the court, women's volleyball went two for three on the week with wins against Alvernia and Hood College. With the wins, the Colonels brought their record up to 500 and now have the potential for an ECAC berth. During their senior day try match, senior opposite hitter Jamie Mikovich had an impressive stat line, notching 39 kills, 24 digs, 7 blocks, and 4 aces. Sophomore Carly Huffman had a combined 66 assists. At the MAC championship hosted by Hood College, women's cross country earned a program best ninth place finish, while the men finished 12th out of 16. Senior Caroline Rickard paced the Colonels, setting a new personal best and matching the 14th best time in 6K program history with a time of 24 minutes and 45 seconds. Junior Noah Molina led the way for the men, finishing the 8K course with a personal best of 27 minutes and 54 seconds. The time was the 11th best time in 8K program history. Both teams will compete in the ECAC Championship on November 9th. As for winter sports, wrestling opened up their season with a 34-15 victory against Lackawanna, earning extra point wins in five of the ten bouts in the match. Nicholas Bauer, Liam Flaherty, Jason DeBoard, John DeVito, Mufasa Almeki, and Austin Kaminsky recorded victories for the Colonels. On the ice, men's ice hockey lost their opening contest 5-3 to SUNY Canton. Sophomore captain Tyson Aruzo completed the scoring for the Colonels with a hat trick. According to head coach Tyler Hines, quote, They had guys who played hungry and desperate. We played like we thought we were better than we were. But at the same time, they made plays. They had the block shots and the physicality that led to penalties, end quote. The men will face off against Lebanon Valley on Friday and El Myra on Saturday. The women's ice hockey team will open up their season on the road against El Myra. Closing out the fresh season for winter sports, men's swimming capped the only win for Colonel Swimming against Lebanon Valley with a score of 137 to 52. As for Beacon's Athlete of the Week, on the men's side, it's freshman football player Jaquan Shields, and on the women's side, it's senior soccer player Jessica Egan. Be sure to grab your copy of the Beacon that comes out every Tuesday to see the Athlete of the Week spreads and the rest of the sports section. Now that's all we have today for Sports Now. I'm Kirsten Peters. And I'm Ariel Reed. We'll be back after this public service announcement.